Welcome back to the Sonic Good Health Podcast. Today I'm with Wendy Runge, friend of mine who's a, I describe her basically as an alchemist. Oh, that's cool. Oh, <laughs> she yeah. helps projects come together. She's a film producer, but it's also like we're in her husband's pizza place called Basil. But today we're going to talk about Bell's Wait, Pulse. Wait, I just want to say one thing. <laughs> he ate a half of pizza. That's all. And he liked it. It was good. Yeah, very good pizza. So yeah. I guess we're technically sponsored by Basil today. Oh, there you go. Look at that. You have former sponsors. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so today we're going to talk about her experience with Bell's palsy. So that is a facial paralysis where the seventh cranial nerve, the facial nerve, is uh, damaged or compressed. So, uh, so Wendy, do you know what triggered the face paralysis for you? So do I definitively know? No. 97% of me knows that it was a byproduct of the, um, taking the J&J um, COVID vaccine, which I took for the purpose of being with my parents in the nursing home. I couldn't be with them otherwise. So there was not like, and I knew that I'm, I'm bad with vaccines anyway, like it's just not, that's the way I go with me. That said, only afterwards I like look at the statistics and finally say, like, uh, there's a high level of of reactiveness in this way. And it basically, it, it kicks into gear that dormant virus that was chickenpox that I was so horrified by at age 20. So 36 years later, it kind of came a bit me. So was it a sudden onset or it can also manifest over a few days? It was wicked quick. Like I was swimming in the neighbor's pool and all of a sudden my lip, which is still not functional, like the first thing they say that the first thing, so the nerve ends here. So the farthest thing from the nerve is the last thing to come back. And sometimes it's the first thing to go away. And this for my lip was just like, I mean, I couldn't, I was swimming and I, I, it felt weird. And I was like, wow, that's weird. And I, earlier in the morning, I had noticed that my left eye was dry. I, and because you don't blink as well, you don't blink as thoroughly. And it was, I was like, well, that's awkward. But again, it was just one of those things that maybe I just did drops. Yeah. Once you put it all together, and then after I noticed that, within two hours, the entire face droop had occurred, and I was I wasn't numb because we learned that the hard way. My husband kept flicking me. I'm like, why are you doing that? It hurts. And he said, oh, because I thought you were paralyzed. I'm not numb. I'm just paralyzed. Yeah. And then I didn't know even I thought I knew the extent of it. Went into the ER and they're like, "Wow, it's bad." And yeah, yeah. But I didn't know. I didn't realize my tongue was half paralyzed. Half my tongue was paralyzed also. So, speech, like speech and language issues. I, I talk all the time. So, not being able to talk sucked. And I was like, "How can this be? Like, what's the deal?" And I thought it was just the peripheral, like the exterior. I didn't know the depth of it. And there wasn't really a lot of literature that I could find. It was like, "Oh, this is definitive." And in the ER and other doctors that I consulted right away said, this is like the worst case I've ever seen. Well, that's like the worst thing you ever want to hear. Yeah. Boy, you know, you, some people suck. You suck really bad. <laughs> it's like, oh. So I didn't want, like, I was like, oh, can't be. Like, I, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, whatever. I'm buoyant. I can do this. And then it states, like, I didn't know that I, because I couldn't blink at all. All of a sudden, boom, it was done, and I couldn't close this eye. I could kind of force it closed if I closed both of them. But it was kind of hear miss, and I did not realize that my that I had lost the control of that. Like you don't, you don't know what you don't know until you're in this. Yeah. I've met a lot of people. My husband said, "Oh, the banker, a nice guy, and he got over his in six weeks." Well, I did. So I'm like nine months in, and I've done just a boatload of therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy. I've done. Um, Acupuncture, which is crazy cool. I do want you to show that picture because yeah. I do love that picture. Um, I think it's really dope. And um, pop it up right now. Boom! <laughs> and um, it's a glamour shot if you have like yeah. for like Hellraiser, I think. And um, so I didn't know, and I just kept pushing it, and nobody offered therapy. Nobody said the doc, my doctor. I said I went back to my doctor. I said, and for I've been to the neurologist. I'm like this is not even you. Just wait for it to get better. Oh, I, I don't wait for it to get better. Like, let's figure it out. Sure. And in the process of figuring it out, they said, well, there's only one speech therapist in the state of Minnesota who's certified to help you. She had to be my clinic, so I got very lucky that way. And she said, I never get referrals because nobody ever deems it bad enough. But here's the extent of all you. I was like, what? So I did that, and then 
and physical therapy. It was like, oh, you know what? Do these things. It'll help. When will it help? We don't know. How do you know it will help? It helps those people. And the neurologist himself said it's the worst case I've ever seen. And I think he had a brain tumor. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I'm not doing that. He's like, well, let's do an MRI. And he said, no, it's just completely inflamed. My all diseases could be like, you've got this. No. no. <laughs> I reject that. Yeah. I don't think so. And so I, but I, so, and um, and I'm not good on steroids. I get really bitchy on steroids. Like, we're getting a lot of steroids, and we're just going to take you off them right away. Bad decision. And then it's like, well, you know, it's inflammatory. So, yeah. so a couple, couple of wicked events in that emergency room. And the second time, when the chicken pox actually fully came out of my of my face and my head, and they're like, wow, you're chicken pox. I know. I know. They're like, you have shingles too, like I can have like the trifecta? Yeah. Because you just be totally screwed up. I was like, not yet, no, no. So, and then obviously I can talk fast again, but I have to, if I'm going to be as clear as possible, usually when I do a podcast, I respect for the podcaster, and I speak slowly and clearly. Nah, all bets are off here, my friend. I can get past you. So that's a deal. It's a really, you know, is it visible? Yeah. If I work really hard, I can compensate enough that it's almost not visible unless you move before. And if I don't pay attention to it, party's over. It's just a big slobber fest. You mentioned speaking slow. Like some <coughs> videos and stuff I do watch on like 1.5 or 2 times speed just because some people talk so slowly and Come on, you actually do. But you don't do that with me. No. If you see a video of mine, well, if, if you watch it on half time, you're like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. We've been friends for a long time, so he knows how fast I speak. Yeah. So kind of self. <laughs> oh, I totally love I'm, a to I'm addicted yeah. to closed caption. Yeah, um, my wife is hard of hearing in her right ear, so I'm just <laughs> out of habit of being with her. Just, I always use it even if I'm not around her. And it's funny because you do catch. I'm a visual learner anyway, so you get the clues, the nuances, etc. like when I'm watching a film, but the, I want to see the text, I want to see what they're saying, yeah. see if it matches, and sometimes it doesn't, and I'm like, wait a minute, but that's a film thing, yeah. that's my, my freaky film thing, so. So, we went over your symptoms, so can you tell me about the recovery process of physical therapy, and it sounded like you, we touched on it before we started, like you did a lot of experimentation on your own too. Because YouTube, you've heard of YouTube, right? And well, I know people who like don't go to the doctor, they go to YouTube. Well, I want to see like what was out there, and it was gruesome, and there wasn't really a lot of like. Um, There's a lot of explanation. I it was old, three, four, five, seven, six, ten years old. And there wasn't a lot of explanation. Like, okay, here's exactly, here's what the process is to recover. And I've learned subsequently that they don't know what the process is to recover. The neurologist said you're not going to recover. And again, I said, no, I don't believe that. So I have friends who are neurologists and, and physical therapy for neuro neurological issues. And like doctors, like really highly regarded people who come to me and look at me. Right in my face. <laughs> I saw the eyebrow move. Or they'll, oh, that, you're much better than last time. Are they stoning me? Maybe, but I like it. So um, you just don't know. They, they don't know. Neurological, like you think. We know approximately the bottom of the ocean, the ocean bottom looks like, you know, whatever. Yeah. We don't have any idea what the human mind can do. And we don't know how it repairs itself. There's things you don't know. Um, these, things, these articles where a guy gets shot in the head with a nail gun, and he goes through his brain, and all of a sudden he's happy all the time. Yeah. Whatever. What exactly happened? You don't know. We know dopamine, like, we know the chemical aspects of it, some of it, but the structural, we just don't know. We know that whatever, when the virus hit me and it hit, it so completely squelched this that it has to, takes all of my energy sometimes just to rewire the, the neurons and like to get it all going in the same direction. I didn't really, I wasn't a beauty pageant contestant to begin with, and I wasn't, had a really funky face to begin with anyway. And I'm, I, I think oh, one doctor said to me, you know, you're, by virtue of the fact that you're expressive, it has helped you, it is therapy, you know, physical therapy. Well, okay. My parents <laughs> suffered all those years of my expressiveness. <laughs> and then when I was 56, they're like, Boom! Back in their face. Oh, like, oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> they're like, oh, you don't look bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's a scoop. It's a, it's a very thoughtful process yeah. to make your body do what it's supposed to do when it did it on its own for so many years. Yeah. Well, <coughs> talk about, I'm going through physical therapy school right now, but it's like you're saying, there's a lot of automatic stuff that you have to relearn with intention. Like you talked about chewing gum for really helping the tongue. And stuff. <coughs> and just like whose water. tongue gets paralyzed? Yeah. In your whole life, there's a oh yeah, my tongue is paralyzed. What? I know some like things like electric shock, but that's short term. Well, that was another, another therapy that was offered to me, electric shock therapy. Like they hook up these electrodes to your face, <clears throat> and the decision was, and they're all just don't, no, no, don't do that because you just end up with muscle spasms. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Is there anything you learned that helped later that you wish you would have known earlier? This is so crazy. I get getting headaches, and eventually someone said to me, you know, the reason you get headaches, the eye doctor next door actually. The reason you get headaches is because you can't squint. Never in my whole life did I thank God for the ability to squint. I never thought about it. It's such an automatic response. So I could squint with one eye and not the other and there was so much like that I had like headaches from that and I I so I would when I could I would just not use this eye and it put so much extra stress on this eye. I went to the doctor and said I said to her, when do I need to come up as checked? I mean, I had it too recently, but I need to check it again, because I don't know. And in fact, in just the course of a few months, it had changed a bit. So, like I, those things that your eyes are attached to your face, when this happens to your face, you should know about it. Like there should be some kind of a descriptive of like, okay, if these are things that could happen, look out for these things. I never found it. I certainly didn't find it from my own medical professionals. I didn't find it from, from um, any current you know, YouTube videos or any, any literature or anything. A lot, a lot of you know, mechanical stuff, here's what you can't do. Well, how am I going to get that back? Yeah. And a lot of the times the answer is we don't know. And everybody's different. Everybody has it in different and very, you know, effects. There's a lot of different symptoms and ways of manifest and different right. triggers. And it's, so they ask me in the process, like, when did you first feel the effects? And my real first cognitive was lit in my lip and my, my eye was dry. Because I wasn't blinking as often on my foot my contact lens. And I only wear one contact lens, so this, and it's only this eye, so this would be the eye that I would notice it. That's it. Two weeks before that, I had a kick in the earache, and I thought it was swimmer's ear. I thought, oh, it would go away. And, and then I, and, and they said, no, no, that was the beginning of it. And I said, had I ever thought, because it starts there, and then, it, you know, that's and then I thought, oh my gosh, my jaw hurts. Maybe I like, whatever. Maybe I go to the dentist, I just been to the dentist. So I thought, if I, and I said, if I had thought those things were, you know, signals of something, could I have been treated? And the answer is no. There's no treatment for it. Yeah. So now if I like get an ear, I'm on a plane, I'm like, oh, it hurts. I'm like, oh crap, am I getting like, like what, what am I, it would be so me, God forbid, I'm not like asking for this, but, like, so we do, like, just get this one back up and normal, and then the other one goes. I'd be like, you know, that, there's that hound dog, like, cartoon with the ears and the sloppy jowls. I'd be like, no, I don't do that. The St. Bernard. <coughs> so that's, so I'm like, oh, so I do get nervous, like, oh my gosh, am I, what is that? He was like, oh, we'll get it again. What? Don't tell me that. What? If I get it again, I'm going to hang upside down for a long time. So, <laughs> and so that it just goes up. Yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, I don't know. So at all. Like he's in a great mood today. <clears throat> like a bat girl. Yeah. Like you never see me in a bat girl in the same place. So maybe it's me. Oh, yeah. But I think that's what I have to do. Because otherwise I don't really know. Like, whatever you feel. It's not life for it. It's just stupid. <laughs> it's like you're sitting somewhere, you're drooling. It's like, really? Well, that's so attractive. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Or straws. I always use straws because my sister says straws make things more fun. So I always use straws anyway. But then you're like, try to put it in the wrong set, and you can't close your lips, and you're like, wow, I'm not getting nothing. Yeah. It's crazy. Or you're chewing gum, it's like, wait, I can't do it. Um, or this, you know, the taco tub, you know, thing where you can. Oh, yeah. So they not do that. <laughs> well, some people can't, and I always could. 
until I could. And I'm like, oh my god, I have like a floppy taco. Is there anything I would avoid? Like having knowing now. Yeah. Um, or it could also just be like stuff they told you not to do. Well, they didn't tell me not to. They told me to do physical therapy and speech therapy. I don't think coordinated with each other because doing so much therapy, like it was just exacerbating things. So they didn't say, you know, limited to minutes a day, because I was doing like 20 to 25 minutes a day. And it was like a big thing, you know, better, because I thought it was going to be better. It did feel better, but it didn't improve things. Um, I think you have to listen to your own barometer. Like I, it's what you do, it's what you do. Um, early on, I thought about bringing the coming to acupuncture. And I didn't act on it because like, no, 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 you know, wait a certain time. Like, why didn't you go earlier? Everybody has their own idea about what's going to heal you. You have to just trust. Yeah. We're not in charge here, and you can do the best you can. And then the rest of it is just um, being patient and accepting the process. It's just the process. So I wish I would have known that before. And my friend said to me, you prepared me to be careful with what we are. I didn't know what that meant. How do you work really hard with you know, it's not like you can say to somebody, um, you're gonna have to, you know, do 100 push-ups and, and 500 setups and 30 pull-ups and da da da. Like it's not like that. It's your face. It's not the way you do. So I think it's the idea of being expressive. And I think the other thing that nobody said to me, you should hide. The same time, nobody said to me, get out there. But my nature is not like I'm just not. I'm not good at hiding. So I'd rather get out there. So my, the first videos I did, so I just came one day, I just came with this idea that I was gonna just spit out two truth bombs. I don't even know where that came from or why. It's just a thing. Sometimes it's even two, by the way, because I'm not that good at math. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's just like, hey, what the hell? But uh, two truth bombs and X up. And I, I kind of set a time with it. And if I have an idea in my head, here's what I want to convey. And then I say it 15 seconds or 30 seconds or under a minute or I don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. And then just get it out there. It was very liberating for me just to be able to share that. Like, hey, you know, it may look hard, but whatever. At least if I'm not in the sun and I'm not going to hide from this. Maybe it gave some people some inspiration to keep going. You know, it's dark and it's, it's crappy in what situation you're in. You know, you can keep going. You can keep moving. And I didn't stop working. I didn't stop believing in the projects we're doing, the films, and like I didn't end up all those things. And I would show up here at the restaurant to help my husband. And I didn't stop, I didn't hide, and I didn't wear a mask unless I had to. Right. And then I didn't want to like make anybody think that, and I wore makeup, which is crazy because your my lips, look, my lips are so funky, asymmetrical. And I, and I, eyes, okay, the eyes feel better, but the lips, I feel it's weird. And then a friend of mine was a makeup artist said, you know, you line your lips and you them out that way. I never knew, because I had lips before. I didn't before. I was like, oh, that's cool. So he will give me, like, these friendly lips, hey, I love what you're doing, I mean, you know, commend you on, like, your courage. There's no courage. I don't, I don't have a gene that would make me hide from a situation. Going out to my parents, that was hard the first time. My mother has cognitive disconnect, and so, you know, she'd see me, and then, what happened? And then she'd see me again, and said, what happened? What happened? And then it got to be like, this is just who you are. So, and then it was okay. My dad's like, oh, you don't look bad at all. But I have a close friend. One time got really agitated because her kids had got lice in school. So she freaked out and thought she had lice, so she shaved her head, and my parents told her she could do it. I mean, I don't know, I never saw her so I don't know. But, you know, my parents were incredibly supportive no matter what the situation was. They didn't, they were like appalled. And um, there you go. I did want to do this thing, you know, the, the people used to do the kids and they're a little like, oh, you, you know, stretch your face out like that, it's going to stick. I'm going to be like, yeah, look, it's stuff. <laughs> like, do those things. <laughs> but I didn't want to do this, my own grandkids. And my right. kids would be like, yeah, whatever, mom. And they were, and I did it. And my kids who I didn't see all the time, because they're away in Israel or in New York, didn't know for a long time that it was so bothersome. And then we do a face, I'm like, wow, mom, you didn't know. Well, when you text somebody, yeah. you don't know. So I wish, you know, you could reach patients all you want to. That's great. 
patients meaning really better incrementally and it's going to come and go like right now it's going to be swollen and you're gonna, it's going to come and go and you're going to have better days or bad days but it doesn't change anything about who you are and I think that would have been really good ratio at the beginning I didn't have a single professional tell me that they all just said well if you would have well, I would have you know I would say if my grandmother had wheels she might have been a bus but she didn't <laughs> so she isn't or she wasn't so it's like if I would have I don't play that game so so I think better advice from the professionals as opposed to, oh, you'll be fine. Yeah. What does fine mean? You'll adapt, or you'll, you know, you'll look goofy, or you'll not, you know, or you'll look back, or you'll look more like you did before than you thought imagined. Uh -huh. Yeah, and from the clinician side, it's interesting because you want to be encouraging and supportive, but you also don't want to go over false promise, hope. Right, over yeah. promise. So what is false hope? I think there's a way to, to, to concretely say, look, you're going to you're going to recover. What's recovery? Does it mean you get 100 percent? I I think I said to you like when I got the report from the neurologist, he said you're not going to get better. I like you're surely not coming back to 100 percent. I cut that out and put it on my wall. I'm like, what do you you know? That's my motivation. To show up someday and be like, okay, now am I okay with 90 percent? Yeah, 85 percent, 80 percent probably. Yeah, fine. If that's all I can get to. As long as I can continue doing what I'm doing. This was never going to buy me dinner. <laughs> this was, you know, what I can do. So I'm not worried about that aspect of it. Um, I do worry about people who are now so focused on social media, it has to look good. Yeah. And so I want it to be the absolute, like, I don't think, um, the Barbie doll, if you took a, I took a, like, a flamethrower to half her face and it kind of drooped, yeah. I want to be that gal in, you know, in a not Barbie doll kind of way. Um, and a lot of people would say, look, you know, you are exactly who you are. And this, if, if, if your heart's the same, you're the same. And that mattered to me. And I didn't get a lot of those reassurances. So I just decided. Yeah. So, I'm like, well, um, I, would, I was a lot more, you know, I do a lot of motivation speaking. So I'm like, well, yeah. if I can't load my own, load my myself, shoot, I'm really not, you know, I better be able to do it. Yeah. She's going to say to the audience, uh, yeah. Wendy's definitely the kind of person that she's just going to say, if you haven't picked it up already, she's just going to decide and do it, like, regardless of who tells her what. <laughs> I like the word no. <laughs> no is just the first part of not now. That's all it is. You know, I don't really care. And I also am hugely invested in the idea that FAIL is an acronym. F-A-I-L stands for first 15th or 50th or 500th attempt in learning, F-A-I-L. When we were little kids, we didn't get up and go, you don't want to walk, and just walk. We fell out walk. And our mothers are like, my mother, God bless her, you're okay, try it again. You know what I did? Try it again. That's what, at some point I got okay with it. Not great, but okay. And then I got better and better. You're, you know, we're all gonna fail the first time we try anything. Fail. We're gonna fail, because we're gonna, Learn at something. Yeah. If you don't learn from something, then you're a failure. You don't walk away and say, God, I really, I got that. I'm a failure. And I don't want to be that. I don't want to be, I don't want, a quitter is a failure. You don't fail till you quit. You can't fail till you die. You don't get to quit till you die. So people, you can wear shame on your face, you know, or you can decide not to be. I had a bad minute. I, I, I made a huge mistake. You know, so that said, you know, faces are important. It's, uh, you kind of believe that's not a simple question, oh. but that's, uh, we've got an answer already, so. Cool. But I do think that you can wear shame on your face or you can decide not to. That's a really good quote to kind of wrap things up. So. I think it's, a, it's really about when I met you, 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 when I first met you, we've been friends a long time, and you were like, here are things I can't do. And I remember sitting with you and saying, no, no, you a lot of things. You just have to decide you can. You know, and in our lives, people will tell us, I will never dunk a basketball. I don't know if you know that, but I will never dunk a basketball. Um, I am built for comfort, not speed. We talked about that, right? So I will live on I can't do. I don't all those things. When I met you, you were in a space where you're like, well, that's where you were. That's what you couldn't do. Look at all the things you've done in such a way. Like, look at you. You know, and I, you've been on my set, and you know, like you work hard, and everybody, and you're into it, and I, you've edited for me, and you've done all kinds of stuff. 
you have all kinds of towns and all kinds of areas. If you had to write that, you know, down six years ago, eight yeah. years ago when we met, and like, you know, grudgingly do it, you ran all those things down because you could and because you wanted to. You know, you're happily married to an amazing gal. Like, you are you have had this opportunity, and at that time, we talked about this when we sat right back here, you know, shame was something that you, like, wore. Yeah. No reason to be ashamed. You didn't see all the greatness you had. You also said, like, I had a lot of, like, pain and sadness in my eyes. It's just, like, should I account for growing yeah. up? And when you walk in today, I'm like, that's gone. <laughs> Look at you, that's gone. I was so excited. And I never thought, you know, certainly on a set of Rachel, that was four years ago, right? So on a set, you know, you were working through a lot of it, but it's gone. There's not, you know, there's nothing but, like, forward-looking here are the things I was. You just gave me a list of six things you want to do. Six. Wait, I am bad at math. Yeah, whatever. Thing. Yeah. And then you want to do, and you can totally achieve all those things. And I would have you on our set in a New York minute again. I'm as fast as Johnny Depp, pretty much, whatever. Because why? Because you you do the things you say you're gonna do. And you do with integrity, and you're not ashamed of anything. We all can decide if we're given gifts. You know, there's a there's a concept of like yeah. you're given something is the Lesson or the blessing? Sometimes they're just blessings. They're a blessing, but you had to learn how to get to that space. My friend said to me, You're going to really have to get your face back. I didn't have any deal with that meant. But now I know what it means to work really hard and accept whatever comes. So I'm thrilled to do this podcast with you. I'm so proud of you. You're just, you're rocking it. Like, so um, anything else I need to help, let me know.